Now, I can write dates from the definition this one. Date J is equal to DI over DA and this will be a cross-sectional area. Then I can write date DI will be equal to J times DA. Can I write like this? Now this area is cross-sectional area. It means it will always be its direction will be in the same direction as J will be. But it may be different. So in order to include all, I am writing this thing is, is here is a vector and now this one is a non-vector. So to convert this into a vector, I will have to write a dot product between the two. So integrating both sides, I will be equal to a surface integral. And this surface integral will be equal to j dot dA. Whether it is to be a closed surface integral or not necessary. Because it can be any surface on which current will flow. In the case when we will convert it with, we can say, another. Uh, integral, then we will have to write this thing in a closed surface integral. So i is equal to this. Now the fundamental theorem of divergence, you know. What is it? If you take a volume integral and a quantity you are taking the divergence of it, then v in a volume beta, then this will be equal. If you take the closed surface integral, and take quantity directly with the cross section area out in the area. The flux of that quantity. Now, on this side, I am giving j dot dA. It means that surface integral, curved <coughs> surface now, j dot dA, I can write is divergence of j in a given volume, right? This will be a volume integral. Now this one should be a closed surface integral. J dot B equal to divergence of this thing and similarly this thing is equal to I. This is equal to I as well. The current is equal to this and now you can write this thing how you can write i in terms of the volume charge you can write it in terms of rho okay. so i can write this i is dq over dt because this is charge moving in time. So from here I can write that divergence V, divergence of J is equal to <coughs> D over DT, D over DT, and this Q I can write, this Q I can write is uh, is rho beta, right? Rho beta. But rho beta will not give you the complete charge unless and until you integrate this thing. So you can write the divergence of J is in volume on a volume integral, this is equal to, when this will come out, okay, when this will come out, then this will be minus curly by curly g, when this will come out of integral, and 
sorry, not minus, but 30 by 30 t. And this will be rho theta. Now there is one thing which we should be careful. In the electrostatic reset, the charge is conserved. So if it will be changing with time, then the conservation is actually demanding. Charge will be decreasing. Charge is conserved. As it is going in time, so it will decrease. In order to compensate the decrease, we put a minus sign here. You know, curly x by curly t, if x is decreasing with time, then the derivative will come out to be negative. In order to compensate the negation, we put a minus sign. So look here, this volume element and this volume element, it's the same volume. So these two are actually cancelling. Are you saying, if the divergence of current density is constant in this volume, it will come out of the integral. Rho will come out of the integral because it's a constant quantity. So these two will cancel and you can write that the divergence of J, divergence of J is equal to minus curly rho over curly <coughs> t. And this equation you call the continuity equation. This is the continuity equation. Divergence of J. J will diverge only when the rho will be changing with time. Right? When rho will be changing, <coughs> when the volume charge density will be changing with time, then the divergence of J will be equal to non-zero. So if you are getting a wire, and in that wire current is going, and all the charges are uniformly distributed, are you say that the charges are going without any interruption? Their equilibrium space between the charges, they, it is the same. Our one charge is not going over the other charge in this motion. So it will be a very uniform current. In that situation, you will say that the volume charge density, the charge per unit volume remains the same with time. And then this thing, curly rho by curly t will be equal to zero. And this will imply the divergence of J will be equal to zero. The divergence of J will be equal to zero. And when this will be the situation, we will call this is steady current. This is a terminology which is used for this, not a uniform, not a constant. We don't use those terminologies. We say steady current. So, if for example, on this table, water is flowing. No, it's a very smooth surface. So you will not come to know that whether this water is in motion or it is steady. But if I will put the marker here, then the water will jump a little bit over it while flowing and you will come to know about it. This jump is actually the divergence of the water. So when charges will go one above the other, then divergence will be there. Divergence of what? Divergence of current density. Clear? So steady current is that current in which there is no change in the charge density with time. Clear? Okay. This is also, this is continuity equation or this is also called the equation of conservation. Right? It is also called the local charge conservation equation. Charge will remain conserved. 
So finally, we can write that is we were in in terms of charges, charges running from I to M, something here, and then Q I V I. Like Q1, V1, Q2, V2, their respective velocities. QV was what? QV was current. Yes. This thing was, we can say, equivalent. If I do a part integral, or I will call it a line integral. And then this thing will be equal to I times DL. Right? I times dl and this thing is equivalent if I write on a surface. So k times dA and this is equivalent to k times sorry j times j times data. Now this is in terms of <coughs> charges, so charge time V. Now when this will be just I, I in that direction, this dA will be converted into dL perpendicular. dL perpendicular means dA, while dA perpendicular means data, the cross-sectional terminology will actually change it like this. So we are now set to the steady case. We defined what are steady currents. So we are now set as we defined electrostatics. Electrostatic is a charge which is at rest. It is a current which is very really calm and smooth, it is steady. So then we define Coulomb's law. How those charges will interact with each other. The analogous law, Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law for the electrostatic, the law which is analogous to that one in magnetostatic is the Diosawa law. Is Diosawa. Is the now. It is pronounced as B O Savar. If you go to university physics, there it is being pronounced there as well. It is to be pronounced as B O Savar, not as by O Savarit. So, over there, we were having stationary. Charges and stationary charges was you can say resulting in electric field is constant, constant electric field, and it was electrostatics. Now, instead of stationary, because current is not something which is stationary. We will say steady current, and this will give rise to a constant magnetic field. Magnetic field will not change, and this will give rise to magnetostatics. For that, we were having Coulomb's law, and for this, we are having the Diosawa law. Now I will not go into the derivation of the Diosawa law, but only to discuss its result because it will be required for our calculation of Maxwell equation. So here we the magnetic field from Diosawa law is actually equal. To mu naught i by 2 pi s and this is in 5 unit vector. 
you know, as it's a wire, wire is in the form of a cylinder. So we are using cylindrical polar coordinates here. Solenoid, toroid, they are all you can say in the form of a cylinder. So we use cylindrical polar coordinates for this one. You know that in <coughs> magnetostatics we were hearing epsilon naught. In magnetostatics we are hearing mu naught. Mu naught is the permeability of free space. Both are permission. <coughs> one is uh, permittivity of free space, the other is permeability of free space. Both are permissions, both are permittivities. So, this one is the mechanism, is you can say, of permission is a bit different. That's why. This thing is termed, means different names are given, permittivity and permeability. So now, I would like to calculate the magnetic field on a closed loop. So, I can write that closed loop integral B dot DL, this is equal Closed loop here, and for B, I will write the naught I by 2 pi S and n pi unit vector dot DL. Now you know that DL and uh, cylindrical <coughs> coordinates is equal to SD phi, right? The length element is equal to. S D phi. You know in cylindrical polar coordinates, the left element D L is equal to G S N S plus S D phi and phi plus D phi. Easy. And so I will have to take this component of D L. The other means what the other will give. Phi dot S will give you zero. They are perpendicular to each other. This will give you zero, only this will remain. So I will write S D phi and phi unit vector. So this implies that integral B dot DL is equal. Now here phi unit vector with phi unit vector will give you one. S will cancel with S. In D phi, when you will integrate, it will give you two phi. Close to, right? So 2 pi is cancelled with this and you are left with mu 